Hi, everyone. Welcome to Interchange. I'm Dan Jones. Thank you so very much for joining us. So much interesting stuff to talk about today and important stuff. What should the police department do about the, and the city about the death of a suspect in the back of a Milwaukee squad car? We'll talk about the proposal by the Milwaukee mayor and the county executive to have city police, instead of sheriff's deputies, patrol all the county parks. And we will see what everyone thinks about the public schools in New York City handing out the morning after pill to girls as young as 14 without having to tell their parents. And we'll talk about the debate taking place right here tonight between Tommy Thompson and Tammy Baldwin. Okay, before we get going, let me introduce everyone. We have Joel McNally, longtime newspaper columnist. You know Gerard Randall, education consultant and local job creation expert. And of course, Denise Calloway, community affairs and public relations professional. Rick Horowitz will be along with commentary at the end of the show. Okay, let's talk first about the death of the robbery suspect in the back of the Milwaukee police car now ruled by the medical examiner to be a homicide. It is believed the man may have had a medical condition which was aggravated by the chase and arrest and that the police officers didn't do enough to help him when he was calling for help and grasping for breath in the back of the squad car. A very troubling video. Is it fair, though, to hold the officers responsible? Denise. Well, I think that when we hold officers in positions of public trust, that does mean there are times when they do bear some of the responsibility for something that's happened. And I think that what concerns me a lot more than the officers is, quite frankly, what appears to be a really slipshod job on the part of the medical examiner to investigate this incident in the very beginning, to depend upon the notes of somebody who talked to somebody who was there, um, one of the detectives, not to view any of the reports uh, personally on the part of this um, deputy medical examiner, to know, to know that there was video in of this incident from that squad car and not to have looked at that video. I mean, to me, that is the most troubling thing that, that has come out of this. Certainly what happened to this young man is horrific, but the fact that all of the information was there for the medical examiner to have made um, a much more well-informed decision on the cause of death for this young man at the very beginning and not to have had that done. I mean, that to me is the place where you have an incredible break in the justice system. I, I know a number of, of police officers and I know that oftentimes when uh, they've been chasing someone and the adrenaline's up, someone gets in the car after they've been caught, a bad guy, um, or someone who's accused of being a bad guy, and they're saying, oh, I don't feel good. I, I, I need to go to the hospital. I can't. It's, it is, in many, many more cases than not, it's a ploy to try to delay going to jail. But I think what has come from this, so what we need to learn from this is, you err on the side of caution. Perhaps you start to think about treating that person with that complaint like there's somebody you know rather than somebody you've just arrested, and you take it more seriously. But if you, if you deal with troubling <clears throat> situations like the Milwaukee police officers mm -hmm. do, especially in the central city, every single night, are you expected to react differently when somebody is struggling in the back of your squad? Yes, yes, because that's what they have been trained to do. That's what they uh, have claimed that they will go that extra mile to ensure that there's fairness, that there's justice, and we rely on that as a community. We rely on their integrity. And in this particular instance, it was a death that didn't need to be, regardless of whether this was someone that was an upstanding uh, citizen in the community, it was a human being whose death did not have to occur. And what makes it worse is the, the, the uh, police integrity has been uh, diminished because of what appears to be to the average person in, in, in the community, a cover-up. Um, if nothing else, as Denise had pointed out, really poor investigative work from the medical examiner's office and frankly, even from the police department. Because if they were all about uh, transparency and bringing to the public uh, information that they know, when they know it, this didn't meet that standard. And unfortunately, um, those who are the administrators in, in the department uh, from the chief on down, bear responsibility for that as well as the officers that were at the scene. What about all the people calling for the chief to resign? I think uh, that's misplaced, frankly. Um, I, and I think 
there are definitely some some things that the chief did wrong in this instance. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the fact in fact, that it took 10 months before this video was even released uh, so that, you know, because there was a public uh, request from, from the media and we know the, the, the chief and the, and the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel are on this battle back and forth and, and he's not going to give them an inch and they're not going to, and they frankly have been a little unfair to him in some of their reporting. Uh, I, that doesn't matter. These are public records. These are public, you know, in this case, a, a public video that uh, Denise mentioned the medical examiner, uh, which, of course, you know, when you read, you know, how little, you know, real investigation was done before that report was written, you know uh, just how bad that operation was. But I was shocked too, that somehow uh, the district attorney's office and, and John Chisholm, I certainly have a great deal of respect, respect for. I think for he's, he's right? one of the best district attorneys, you know, since I've been in Milwaukee. Uh, but uh, the fact that they saw this video before the public ever did, uh, their, their investigation, uh, the Fire and Police Commission, who I think under Michael Tobin has done a better job than the Fire and Police Commission did for a long time in the past where, you know, the, it was always the police investigating themselves. There weren't any outside investigators. Uh, that's been changed, but they saw this video as well. And, and all, literally every one of these institutions, uh, you know, passed on it and said, you know, this was uh, justifiable. Maybe starting out because of that medical examiner's report, which didn't identify as a homicide, identified as, as justifiable. But then when you see I understand why police, you know, are suspicious of, of people they've run down the street to track down. And, uh, but this wasn't any major criminal either. This, w this was a, someone who gave them, a, gave them a run for it. But then uh, I have to say, I thought a long time ago, this practice of police, you know, a heavy police officer getting on someone's back and putting their knee in their back and compressing their chest, that was outlawed in this department a long time ago because we've had other Especially deaths. Especially after other incidents deaths on Water Street. Of that. Yes. yes. But yeah, the, the thing about it is though, and this is always the, when you have an occasion like this, there are good police officers out there who when someone tells them they're having a problem in the back of the squad car, they're gonna call for help. Right. Yeah. When there's something that happens on the street and someone's under duress, they take care of that. The problem with an instance like this is that it paints all police officers, including the vast majority of cops who are out there taking care of what needs to be done and being respectful to the people they arrest, it puts them in this light with these few folks who have not behaved appropriately. All right, next topic. Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett and County Executive Chris Abley announced a plan this week to have city police officers patrol the lakefront and county parks instead of sheriff's deputies. Sheriff David Clark said they can have whatever plan they want, but he's not going to be a part of it and he's not going to do it. As a matter of fact, he said he might just start having his deputies patrol Milwaukee streets and Milwaukee neighborhoods as well. Uh, there's a, I support this. There's, the there's, <laughs> you know, there's a little bit of humor in it, but uh, not really. it is interesting that this battle And it's continues. not the first time that he's, he's, he's uh, made that comment. Look, this has more underpinnings of personal animosity wrapped up in it than there really ought to be, for starters. I don't think the county executive has made a good case as to why um, this piece of the sheriff's responsibility ought to be transferred over to the city. There's no compelling case that's been made that the city police department is able to prioritize those calls that are going to come in and handle more of them than the sheriff's department had prioritized and responded to. There's no ca case that's been made that the cost is not going to escalate and lead to the savings that the county exec claims will be made. And frankly, after all of the, um, uh, after all of the, the, the incidents, of crime in neighborhoods that uh, the, the police department have targeted where they've said they've been undermanned, they don't have enough resources to deal with some of these issues. How is it they're gonna take on this extra responsibility just because it may mean a transfer of dollars from the county to the city? The city, uh, years back, and I wanna say it was either in the 30s or 40s, uh, were responsible for the parks. They, the city parks were their responsibility, those in the city of Milwaukee. They transferred that responsibility over to the county. Uh, now all of a sudden, 
they're willing to take back some responsibility for the quality of life that happens in those parks, uh, but they don't want to bear the cost for that. If, if I would think that it would be more of a sincere response on their part to share cost with county government if they said our police will patrol and will patrol it at the cost of our citizens. Do, do Milwaukee police officers, officers have so much time on their hand that now all of, a, all of a sudden they can pick up this added responsibility? Well, I don't know that it's going to be that they're going to have so much time on their hand. Money is going to be transferred. There are going to be some additional folks that are hired. I, I'm just going to kind of go on the common sense piece of, 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 of things here, just looking at a map. If we have these parks, county parks, <laughs> that are surrounded by the city of Milwaukee. In the city. In the city, patrolled by Milwaukee police officers. If you have a problem, city police officers are going to be in a much better situation to be able to respond just because they're closer. I, I think that uh, one of the things that the sheriff has admitted is that in some parks in Milwaukee County, in, in the city of Milwaukee, some Milwaukee County parks in the city of Milwaukee, we have not had sheriff's deputies patrolling those parks um, in the, for the past couple of years. So it's not as if there's this great bit of, of goodwill and protection that people will suddenly find themselves without. We haven't had it anyway. The question is now, what seems to make the, more, the most sense? Is it, is, I, it, is it a step, do you think, if this ever went through, and who knows if it will, is it a step to do away with the Sheriff's Department? Uh, I wouldn't mind if it was. Uh, okay. I couldn't disagree more with, with Gerard. Uh, Sheriff Clark does have a problem, and it is, it is his own personality problem. Here he is, now he's identifying both uh, Mayor Tom Barrett and Chris Abley, the county executive, as, as terrible politicians. He previously... Uh, has said that about practically every other black uh, elected official except himself. Uh, he's, he's called out members of the county board who have cut his budget, uh, calling them the most foul things in press releases that I, I can't even quote on this air, talking about uh, places they have their head up their anatomy uh, that, you know, is you know, really beneath any respected public official in, in this city. Uh, he's, he's had his budget cut. By, by Chris Abley, the, the county executive, I think for good reason. Uh, he, oh, by the way, on that list of public officials, he also denounces, that includes the district attorney and the chief judge and practically every mm -hmm. other judge in the county. He is, a, he is a man unto himself who's not doing his job much. I think, you know what he really is upset about with this removal? It's removing that a portable jail, which he places on the lakefront with his name on the side of it, uh, you know, that is on the lake. Every time you go by the lake, I, it, it reminds me of like Guantanamo Bay or something. It, it's a trailer that they actually hold uh, suspects in cages until they can, you know, get enough to take downtown, and it has his name on the side. That's all he really cares about. It's a power grab with no compelling reason for doing the it, other than you've got a group, money. you've got a group, the no, it, it, that, that, that's, 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 that's not, that's not do it anymore because that's, his that's, budget was that's, cut. That's not proven. Yeah. This is a personal animosity. Everybody not. against it's the not. sheriff? You know, it's the, it's the, the sheriff it against is, everybody. The thing about it Sometimes is, the sheriff is right. And, and, uh, and many times the time. sheriff is wrong. <laughs> and one of the things that he's wrong about is that if you're going to play politics with other folks, you have to do it in a way where you at least show people some respect at some point in time. Admit that they do have some power that you don't have. Sheriff Clark hasn't done that. The problem he has now is he really, other than himself, has nobody else to stand up for him and to say, this is a guy who can do a good job because we collaborated with him on X, Y, and Z. He holds this community hostage by saying he needs more money for X, Y, and Z, and he's not even doing X, Y, and Z. And his conservative supporters do not support the idea of him spending more in his budget. They're in favor of cutting his budget just like the county executive wants to do. Next topic. I'm fascinated by the story this week about New York City public schools handing out the morning after pill to kids as young as 14 without having to tell the parents. Parents do have an opportunity to opt out of the program, but if they don't opt out, then the schools can give the girls the morning after pill without even telling the parents. So in New York City, you can't buy a 36 ounce giant cup of soda, but you can get the morning after pill from your school nurse. Is that odd? It, it's odd, it makes no sense to me. I, this is one of those things where parental guidance, parental engagement, uh, it ought to be tantamount. And just because they haven't gotten the note 
or they haven't gotten the, the written permission back, that betokens acquiescence to this makes no sense to me. If anything, it ought to be an indicator that the parents aren't agreeing, and because the parents have sent no signal back that uh, they approve expressly, then you, you ought not make it available to them. I'm not so sure they ought to make it available even to the ones who are in the schools that have parental permission. I'm just not certain that's a school's responsibility to do that. Uh, given that, um, I am concerned that uh, there will be overreaches by um, elected officials or others that run the schools in New York uh, to extend that same philosophy in other arenas where they say if in the absence of any parental guidance one way or the other, we're just going to do it. And I think that's a poor signal to send to parents that you ought to be more engaged in the lives of your kids and, 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 and be the one to be responsible for uh, what we're going to encourage your kids to do, especially when it becomes serious behavior like taking an abortifactive. If, uh, if you were a parent who was freaked out about sex education in the high school classroom and then the availability of prophylactics in the high school classroom, I would think a New York parent would be totally freaked about this. Yeah, but maybe if you were a little less freaked out about having your child have a comprehensive sex education plan, you wouldn't have to worry so much about whether or not your 14-year-old daughter was going to need to be able to access the morning after pill. I, I do have some concerns about this. Um, I would feel better if parents were to opt in. Um, because then, to me, there's some education, some discussion that's taking place between a parent and their young daughter about making sure that that child understands what this pill is about, what the possible side effects are, but at the same time understanding that as a parent you want your child, above all, to be able to protect yourself. But I, I don't like the fact that it's just kind of, you know, oh, unless you say no, the answer is yes. I, I heard one uh, school board member in New York <laughs> say, uh, who was supportive of this, saying, you know, if we asked any of these students, should we call your parents to mm -hmm. ask if this is okay, they would all say no. You're absolutely right. And, and let me say several things, because I, I, I'm i sorry, I disagree with both of you. That's okay. Uh, and, and the moderator. <laughs> uh, um, if you want a 13-year-old girl or a 14-year-old girl to become pregnant, uh, I would suggest, yeah, you should be opposed to them having access to this drug the morning after. Uh, but we know, parents know, we. Parents who love our children know children screw up, children mess up, children make mistakes, children, and, and when we're talking about sex, we're talking about something that happens in, in moments of passion when your head's not right anyway. We know that. Uh, so I would rather a 13 or 14 year old girl not become pregnant and to have a chance, this is a safe uh, treatment. It's been the Food and Drug Administration it says it's safe, it's not harming these children. Let me say this about parents, though. This thing about contacting parents, and, and we all should contact the parents, and the parents should be involved, because I've seen this in, in other issues as well. Everyone seems to have the idea that every parent in America is like themselves and are decent people and are, are you know, ready to talk to their kids. And, and uh, there are children that if their parent was told they were sexually active, their parents would throw them out of their house, their fathers would beat them up, uh, there are terrible brutalities that have happened as a result of those kinds of conflicts within pet families. We can't assume that every family you know, is like our family. And the thing is, what you just said, if a child is afraid to get this pill because their parent is going to be alerted because of the fear and the danger, uh, and doesn't get that pill, that could change their lives and ruin their lives forever. Okay, we move on. One of the races attracting the most attention in November is the U.S. Senate race to replace retiring Wisconsin Senator Herb Cole. It pits Republican former Governor Tommy Thompson against Democratic Congresswoman Tammy Baldwin. Some polls show this could be a pretty close one. Some even show Baldwin with a sizable lead. There is a live statewide broadcast debate from our studios right here tonight, Friday night, in just a little while, 8 o'clock, over on Milwaukee Public TV channel 36.1. This should be a good one, Denise. Uh, I what do you expect think, to happen? I think it's going to be fascinating. Um, who would have thought three months ago 
that we be in the position that we are right now. We're in a number of polls. Tommy Thompson number. is the underdog. Um, I think that what this is going to do is give both candidates a really a good chance to introduce themselves to the state. I mean, who are you really? Is Tommy Thompson, the old Tommy Thompson, the governor everybody knew and loved who did the one time say he wanted to stick it to Milwaukee? <laughs> um, or, or is he this, this new Tommy Thompson who is not nearly as moderate as he was and has really moved very far to the right? And who's Tammy Baldwin? Is, is she this person who stands up for Wisconsin, as she has said, calls for things to, to be done that bring jobs to the state? Or as, as the governor's uh, ad say, is she too radical for Wisconsin? I mean, this is a chance for them to really identify who they are. And I think the candidate who really starts to talk first about what the other candidate isn't is the <laughs> one who's going to show that they're in the biggest amount of trouble. Your, your, your friend, Governor Thompson, <clears throat> uh, does he still have to define himself or does everybody in the state of Wisconsin know exactly what he is? I've been with him on so many occasions where people come up to him, know him, like him, respect him, agree with him. Um, I think that um, <clears throat> what will happen in this race is that he will remind folks of his innovations in government. He will remind folks of his leadership. Uh, people who are already familiar with the fact that he is a conservative will once again be reminded that he <laughs> is a conservative. Um, and that he is a caring person. Those ads that have been run notwithstanding. The one thing that this debate will do though, I think is launch a barrage of ads following the debates. If we haven't seen uh, the, the advertisements yet coming from the Thompson campaign, you're certainly gonna see them after these debates are over with. Uh, and, and that to me will show that the, the campaign has engaged in full swing uh, to define Tammy Baldwin, who's really actually done a pretty good job of defining herself and uh, putting some definition on Thompson that's and not appealing. Only 30 seconds. Um, I, I, I think Tommy is the past, and he's claiming he's not who he was. He's claiming he's much more conservative than we remember him. Uh, we know because of his disclosures that he's now worth anywhere from $13 million to $44 million. Is that bad? Uh, no, it's not bad, but that's not who he was when he was governor. And, and the guy that can make, uh, you know, $44 million in the private sector after Legitimately. immediately after leaving government, that raises a lot of, well, if he would release his tax forms, it would help. Tammy is a terrific candidate. Tommy assumed that he was going to win this. The media assumed Tommy was going to win this. And Tammy has just run a better campaign. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Senate race isn't the only one that seems to be moving in the Democrats' direction lately. But the Republican presidential candidate says he's not worried either. And neither are a strategist. They insist that there's plenty of time to get right back into this thing. In fact, all they need to do to turn it around is, well, let Rick Horowitz explain. Rick. Yeah, hello. Is this a campaign world? Yeah, I need to talk to someone in campaign supplies. Sure, campaign equipment, whatever. Uh, what, can you transfer me over to? Okay, yeah, great, yeah. Uh, I'm calling from the uh, Romney campaign, and we need to, for president. Right, Mitt Romney, that's right. What? Yeah, a little rocky uh, lately, but uh, we're getting things back on track. Actually, uh, that's why I'm calling. That's why I'm calling. We, we need to order a reset button. That's right, a reset button, a, a new one. We, we keep saying we're pushing the reset button. and Yeah, we keep pushing the one we have, but it's not working. No, not for a while now. Well, the economy, uh, first of all, we got to get back to the economy, you know, job creators, that kind of thing. How's that? No, I wound up talking about Libya. That wasn't supposed to happen. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, then we tried uh, hitting the reset button so he'd give more policy details, you know, like on his tax plan and such. But it didn't really change anything. Right. Same with doing uh, more campaign events, uh, not so many fundraisers. Uh, same with humanizing them. We, we keep... No, I know it can't do miracles. I know that. But we figured it couldn't hurt. Yeah, that didn't help at all. We're still trying to clean that one up. Right, we've got it 47% under control. Very funny. Yeah. Say again? Say again? A, a retool button? To, I thought we... 
Oh, a reset button and a retool button. Yeah, well, if you think they'd... No, we already tried a refocus button. Useless. He wound up stuck on China. So the, the reset retool campaign combo pack? Sure, sure. Why not? You do overnight shipping? Uh, yeah, we're kind of in a hurry. No, I wouldn't say we're desperate. Fine, we're desperate, whatever. Uh, so it'll go out today? Great, great, really appreciate it. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you throw in an Etch-A-Sketch? Well, thank you, Rick, and thank you so very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.